Welcome to another episode of The Powerhouse Man. I'm so excited to introduce you to your guest today. I know this guy. He's a friend of mine. We like to, uh, we get together and we chat. Um, and uh, yeah, just you've done amazing things. I'm really excited to introduce you. So uh, Dr. Tawari is a plastic surgeon. He is the owner and uh, founder of Midwest Breast and Aesthetic Surgery. And I know you have partners in that. You're part of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. You're a member of uh, the American Board of Plastic Surgery. You've got all kinds of amazing things that you've done in your life as far as, uh, you know, graduating Harvard University. I know, I believe you went also to, is it NYU? Yeah, NYU for medical school. NYU for medical school. You've got a successful practice and business outside of your career. Uh, you've got a beautiful wife. You've got daughters, uh, two daughters. And, uh, you know, just overall, like I, I just respect so much of how you've created your life and uh, and designed your life. Um, and you continuously take it up to the next to the next level too, looking to always improve yourself in different ways. So I'm excited to talk to you in the context of being a man in this world because this channel is all about how do we evolve as men. So as a as a as a doctor, as a family man, as a businessman, what are some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Would you say as a as a man in your profession? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to be on this podcast. You know, I think uh, it's it's always great to kind of hang out with other men, other guys, um, and talk about these types of uh, issues because they're really not talked about enough. Yeah, you got um, your bourbon with you too. Yeah, I got my my sipping bourbon here. You know, I can't be on a man podcast without a little <laughs> bourbon. This is a, this is Angel's Envy Rye for anyone who's curious. Uh, <laughs> outstanding bourbon. Um, so. What have been some of the challenges? You know, one of the challenges that I think any man has to face in developing their career is just understanding, um, you know, what what does it mean to be a man? You know, and kind of recognizing your masculinity, uh, understanding that um, it's okay to do that, uh, particularly in this uh, culture, it's increasingly um, toxic, you know, to, to be a man and. And to understand, um, there's certain things I think that define manhood. It's sort of the ability to grow, to push yourself, to push your boundaries, to continually challenge yourself um, personally and professionally. You know, one hallmark of my career has always been um, trying to push myself to the next level. You know, I always think that after three to five years of doing something, it's really time to start thinking about the next phase. And certainly by seven years, it's an inflection point. You know, people talk about the seven-year itch when it comes to marriages. Well, I think the seven-year itch when it comes to your career is mm -hmm. also really important. And, um, you know, changing up your physical space, changing up your professional space. It's really important to not get complacent, to not uh, surround yourself with sameness. You know, I think as a, as a man, you need to seek adventure. You need to seek uh, excitement. You need to seek challenges. And without that, you tend to turn inward. You tend to to retract and withdraw. Um, and this keeps you engaged in society, keeps you engaged uh, with your friends and family. And sort of that forward motion, that pressing forward, I think is critically important to be to be successful, to be successful as a man. Uh, I love how you say that because that's one of the big you know qualities of masculinity, right? Is that we're pushing forward we're wanting to accomplish, wanting to expand, wanting to be engaged. What came to mind when you were talking was, you know, we talk a lot about like porn on this channel mm. in the sense of it being a challenge in this world. And, um, you know, just overall, uh, whether it's, you know, looking at Instagram models or pornography or chasing women 24 seven, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about evolving beyond that. How, um, because these like pornography, for example, is, is so readily available and it gives us a, a feeling that we've accomplished, 
you know, we've got that, you know, we watch porn and, and we've tricked our minds to thinking that we've had sex or that yeah. we've got with this woman, or we've watched 10 different porn stars and we, we've tricked our mind to thinking we've got with 10 different yeah. women, but we've just, we're just sitting there in front of a screen, you know, and generally by ourselves lonely. Right. Uh, so, you know, I find like, you know, like this, um, how do you find like a, being a man, how you deal with this kind of constant temptation in the world? Mm. Because every man deals with this. This is not something that one man is dealing with. This is a, a challenge for every single man uh, on the planet right now. It's a society wide problem and just the ready access to, to all that stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an older guy, I'm in my mid forties. So, you know, I can only imagine if you're in your mid twenties or, or younger, how difficult it is to have your life essentially on screen, to have Instagram and, uh, you know, any type of porn hub, whatever, uh, accessible on your, on your phone. You know, I think to be a man, there's, there's really three pillars that I think of. You've got to be able to handle your finances. That's the first F you've got to right. be able to fight some kind of physical activity and you've got to be able to fuck and <laughs> or for, we'll call it fornicate. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Think when, when it comes to, uh, things like pornography, all these, um, entities you know that are so distracting it definitely diminishes you you know it diminishes you in all three areas but certainly in your in your relationships and your ability to perform and you know pornography is entertainment that's all it is you know the angles the the way things are set up it's not a reality it's it's you know like watching batman or you know watching right. the sopranos it's entertainment and um I think when you view it through that lens, you realize how artificial it really is. Um, and uh, it, it does detract from, I think, those three pillars, which I think are really important to focus on, because if you focus on those three pillars, you know, the relationships will come, you know, the, the, uh, the women will come, but they're not going to come if you are focused on that aspect of, of your life, the pornography. It's really you know, your, yourself, your ability to push yourself financially, physically, and in your relationships that matter. I, I love it. The three F's. So financial, F's. financial, uh, I, I remember financial and I remember fuck. What was that? What was the and middle one? <laughs> I like, I like fight. You know, I like fight. the box. So yeah. the ability to, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a martial art. It means physical activity, you know, pushing your body, yeah. whether it's, you know, long distance running or weightlifting or a sport you enjoy, you know, something that really kind of challenges you in a physical uh, way. I think that's very important for a guy to do. Now, you're, uh, you've grown a successful practice, Midwest, Mid Midwest Breast, um, doing plastic surgery, um, finances. That's a tough yeah. idea for a lot of guys. You know, a lot of guys really talk to me about like, man, I'm struggling with my finances. You know, I'm having a hard time making money or uh, even when they have some money, maybe spending it properly or using it properly. Is there any thoughts about, you know, how we as men can become stronger in the world of finances from your experience? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a son. If I were to have had a son, I think the most important um, piece of advice I would give him and the advice that I will give to my daughters as they look for spouses from a financial aspect is it's very important as a man to own something, to own a component of your business, your brand, your, um, the less you work for somebody else, the more autonomy you have, the more you can uh, tap into your own creativity the higher the likelihood you will be the higher the likelihood will be for you to be successful and from a very practical standpoint ultimately the way you make money in the west is uh, ownership of an entity that gives you taxable benefits that ultimately leads to a sale of that entity um, these are the ways to be financially successful and mm. if you're a young person it's to make mistakes early and often but early because when you make a mistake as a 22 23 24 year old it's not as costly as a 42 43 44 year old 
uh, taking risks early. Um, and to be honest, from a business standpoint, it doesn't even matter what you do. Do something that you're interested in. Do something that you have that gives you some kicks. But right. then create a structure where you can become a leader in that area, where you can develop some intellectual property in that area, where you can develop a niche in that area, um, and ultimately have ownership of a corporate entity in that area. You know, I think that's the most important thing that you can do um, from a career standpoint, so that when you hit mid-career, you know, you put yourself in a, in a position of success. I love that you're just being very open about like own something, you know, mm -hmm. go down that road of owning something. It's the only way to get rich. I mean, that's that, right. that is literally the only way to accumulate wealth is yeah. to own something, whether that's stocks, that's ownership, whether that's, uh, uh, you know, index funds, mutual funds, that's ownership. But the most important thing you can do is own your time because right. that's the one resource that is, uh, you know, it's finite and decreasing with every day. Yeah, that's right. I'll tell people you can get money back. You can get all kinds of yeah. things back. You can mess up in all areas, but when, but time is, is, is non forgiving. It's merciless. It's right. just, it ticks on whether you're, whether you're conscious or not, whether you're sleeping or not, whether you're making good choices or not, we've all got a certain amount of time and it's all about, you know, managing and owning that time. Yeah. I love that piece of advice. It's something that I think we can all be reminded of, of how important time is. Um, and I love that you stretch emphasis on owning something. I know for me, uh, when I was like, all right, I'm going to go make a lot of money. I said, oh, I'm, you can't do that working for someone else. You just can't. And I, re I recognized you can't do it working for someone else. You can't do it when someone else dictates your time either because they always get you to work on the low task activities. That's why they've hired you in a way, right? To, to, leverage, yeah. to leverage them so that they can work on the big task activities where the, where, the, where the bigger gains are at. And I was like, and so I've got to create a business and create opportunities in that way. And so for me, I, you know, generated uh, my coaching practice and the army and, and, uh, and then doing it through that. So it's really, really interesting to say that. And I also, so you can't work for anybody else and do it. And ultimately uh, it seems like you have to set that goal. It has to be intentional. I think a lot of guys think money is luck. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know, some people are lucky. They're rich, you know, what do you, what do you, would you say to a guy who thinks that money or his financial situation might be chalked up to luck? Well, I mean, I think the best financial plan is to be born rich. The, uh, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to go to the NBA, the best plan is to be born LeBron James. Right. For, for those of us that aren't born rich or aren't born LeBron James, you know, it, you don't need to be born with uh with money if you look at the if you look at you know a great example is uh if you look at the forbes 400 the richest people in america there's a strong component of inherited wealth on that list but there's a stronger component of accumulated wealth wealth you know people that are first generation in their in their businesses and no you don't have to be a billionaire to, to live a very successful happy productive life um far from it but you do have to own your time um, and you do have to do that in an intentional way. And in, in fact, some of the um, least successful people that I know are people that were born with money because hmm. there's, no, there's no hunger. There's no intensity. There's no reason to strive. You know, I think uh, there's a great quote from Michael Dell um, who he had said, I was born with all the requisite um, parameters for success. I was born poor. I had a single mother and I had no support. So I had all the things that were necessary to succeed. And I think there are truths to that. You know, if you are in a position where you don't have a choice but to succeed, I think it taps into parts of you that uh, somebody who has, you know, um, daddy's money or whatever is not going to have the same needs, the same desire, the same hunger. I'm not going to minimize the importance of inherited wealth i'm yeah. not going to analyze the importance of um resources from you know social uh capital family friends whoever those are real things 
social networks are real things. Um, there's no way to, to minimize that. But you know what? If you don't have access to those, you can't bemoan your lot. You know, you still have to get on with it. And, right. you know, there's nothing to be gained by saying, well, look what that guy's got. And look what that guy's got. Because if that's not your situation, you know, you've got to focus on your uh, on your strengths. And the philosophy for me has been focus on your strengths, ignore your weaknesses. You know, yeah. I tend to focus on the things that I'm good at. And I tend to outsource or ignore the things I'm bad at. I'm bad at a lot of things. I just don't deal with them. I either yeah. partner with people who are, are good at them, or I hire people that are good at them, or I marry people that are good at them. <laughs> um, and, you know, in, in either in any scenario, I'm focusing on the things that I'm good at. And part of that is knowing, you know, what are your strengths? You know, I think a really good um, way to understand who you are is to do, uh, it's called the, um, it's a personality test. Uh, for example, I'm an ENTP. Uh, and it really gives you an amazing insight. There are 16 personality types into who you are. And I remember the first time I saw this was about seven years ago, and I was shocked how accurate it was. Right. And a lot of the times these personality tests are used to place people into different jobs. But I think it's a great way to kind of take a self-assessment of what your strengths are and what types of careers you know will be the right um, fit for you. But ultimately, you know, if you're going to try to get wealthy, if you're trying to really put your financial out house in order and you're a young person, you should be thinking about how am I going to own my time, my, my, uh, my brand, you know, my niche uh, five, 10 years down the road. And yeah, and what you're saying here is long term thinking, too. And that's just a, an emphasis I want to make on, on what you're saying is that, uh, you know, you're not talking about three months from now. I think a lot of guys are like, yeah, I want to get rich. I got this thing going on. I'm doing stocks. I'm doing Bitcoin. I'm doing whatever, whatever, you know, whatever million ways there are to make money out there. But often I find that the reality is a lot of uh, a lot of folks, you know, 30s, 20s, you know, aren't thinking long term and not realizing that, you know, it's a long term game. You got to think five, 10 years out um, and you have to be thinking strategically in that way. I want to the absolute easiest way to make money is if you do have if you're not able to own your own business, then the number one thing you need to be doing is dollar cost averaging. Uh, investment into a index mutual fund. You know, if you're in the West and um, you have the ability to invest into uh, mutual funds, a Vanguard index fund, which is a no load index fund, is the cheapest way to use the benefit of your youth over the long term. Um, and you know, I think crypto is great. I think those things are great. You know, I don't know. Um, I have investments in crypto. Uh, I think that there is a role for crypto in a portfolio, but I personally would not put, you know, the majority of my net worth into a crypto investment. Um, I think it's worked out for certain people. You know, it's worked out uh, well for a small number of people. It's not worked out great for the majority of people. Uh, and I think that there will be government regulation of crypto in the future. Uh, I don't think that are, the government is going to tolerate a currency that's completely unregulated. Yeah. Um, so I think that crypto um, will have a reckoning, but I'm no expert. So don't take that as financial advice. But yeah, I'm yeah. an expert in uh, in kind of conservative investing, and it is a long haul, slow and steady wins the race. Is kind of how you get to um, a point in 15 years, you know, where you're quite comfortable if you do things smart. Yeah. You know, I appreciate you saying that because, again, there's so much emphasis, I think, in this world of instant gratification, right? Uh, you know, I worked out three times. Why am I not ripped? I, uh, you know, we talk about semen retention as a lifestyle, sexual alchemy and things here. And it's like people are like, oh, I've done it for two weeks. Why am I like, why aren't all these women just, you know, like yeah. just yanking my pants down type of thing? All kinds of different <clears throat> things that can be applied for. And so I just appreciate you really setting like this is the reality, you know, and as men, I think it's it's super uh, important that we understand that we we develop our our long term thinking. Now I want to I want to go on to the second F, uh, which is fight. And so yeah. you yeah you you do boxing. 
Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so that's the way that you fight in physical activity. What is it about this and the, the second F the fight? What is it about that? That helps us as men step into our power, own ourselves better and ultimately become successful. Yeah, I think it's, there's a couple aspects to it that I think are really important. So the first is just the physical piece. You know, I think men have always been, you know, your, your grandfather, my grandfather, was a physical person right. his grandfather was even more physical yeah so we all come from a lineage of men of uh you know fathers and grandfathers who had to work physical activity to make it through uh their lives and it's integral from a um from a longevity standpoint from a health and fitness standpoint um, from a mindset standpoint to be physically fit there is no way you are going to perform well in, you know, the uh, bedroom or the boardroom if you're not, you know, performing well in the gym. Um, right. I personally, I like uh, activities like boxing. I think boxing is a great exercise because it's fun. Um, it's fun to hit another guy. It's fun to get hit by another guy um, as long as you don't get knocked out or get hit in the head. Um, and it's also really important to be in a space where you are with other men. You know, a predominantly men's gym, I tend to find incredibly supportive. You yeah. know, that's why I think organized athletics are very important for young men. Um, you get a sense of camaraderie and a sense of support that's very different than you get from women. And uh, I think that's the type of environment when you're in a, a men's gym. Um, and I don't want to just limit it to athletics necessarily. I think you can get these same types of um, uh, results from, let's say, activity in music, something that's, you know, a physical uh, activity, drumming, or, you know, I think there are other way areas other than straight athletics to get this. But I think athletics are very important because if, you're, if your body is fit, uh, if your cardiovascular system is fit, um, you're just more engaged in the world. Mm. Yeah. Like I said, I think, I think there's a place for definitely for, you know, arts and different expressions of, uh, of creativity. Um, however, it's like, you know, fundamentally we have to be physical in some way, shape or form. We yeah. were designed to be physical. We were designed to move and the sedentary type of lifestyles that we have right now, I see is doing so much damage. And again, when you spend all day on the computer and maybe you're feeling disconnected, you're not feeling fulfilled in your work. You're not feeling, you don't feel like you own your time. It's easy to get down, then suck down the rabbit hole of porn and, you know, overindulging in everything and losing discipline and focus. And I think that's yeah. where a lot of guys are going astray. That's why they come to a discipline like semen retention or practice, because ultimately I think undertone, whether they realize it or not, they're learning for some discipline because that we all know inherently that it's discipline and focus that really lead to the results that we want and a lot starts in the gym you know it's hard to see the results of something like semen retention right it's hard to see the results of investing in a mutual fund yeah right it's easy to see the results of working out in six weeks you know we all know what it feels like when after six weeks of working out someone says to you are your arms bigger you know right. have you been working out that's a good feeling and so there's a positive reinforcement there and so um, a lot of this starts in the gym because it is something that you can control and it is something that you can put positive energy into. Um, and so I think that second F is a really important F. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so let's go to the last, uh, the last F. We'll save the best for last, right? Yeah, this, we, this is we the got best our F. finances together. We got our our fitness together. Now let's fuck like kings, right? Now, that was, <laughs> now as a, as a, and I appreciate you talking about it because we know that uh, you know sex is a major part of life. It's a natural part of life, and uh, and everybody's either doing it or watching it, or they want to do it if they're not doing it, right? And uh, and uh, and and yet at the same time, it could be a taboo topic. It could be a sensitive topic. There's many different belief systems. Uh, from your perspective, you know where you're at in your life uh, as a man. Why is it important that we can fuck good? Why is it important you think that that is part of being a man or or, or a part of our masculinity? Yeah, I think it's you know it, it extends to more than just you know having uh, you know 
being able to fuck your, your wife or your girlfriend or whomever. It's your ability to kind of control the room, to, mm. you know, have people follow you, uh, to be a good leader. Um, and in a practical sense, you know, that's how you keep your relationship strong. Right. You know, I don't care what anybody says. If you're not, if you're not working in the bedroom, you know, if your dick's limp because you've been jerking off the porn all day, you know, you're not going to have a good relationship with your wife or your or your your uh, girlfriend, and you know that's on you. Like that's your job to be able to pull that off and to do it in a way that uh, you know you're the best experience and you have control over that. Like that's why it's so great to be a man. You've got control over these things, and it's actually very liberating to be able to control, you know, uh, yourself in the bedroom and to be able to provide an experience for somebody. And if you're able to do that, you know, the rewards that you will gain from your spouse, from your, from your girlfriend are immeasurable. You know, a woman that is uh, committed to you um, is an amazing feeling and it's an un- invaluable resource in your life. Um, and, but it really all comes with your ability to perform. And again, if you're committed, uh, if you're spending all your time on pornography or whatever, like it's just not going to work out that great. Your whole neurochemistry changes. You know the way you you see these relationships, the way you you see the act of sex. You know it all changes. And again, uh, it becomes a performative, entertainment-driven thing, not a relationship. And a you know you don't understand how to connect with a woman, how to build sexual tension, how to, you know, create the experience that ultimately, you know, uh, develops the type of, um, you know, outcome that you want. Yeah. I think it's like, there's such an interlink between our, our psychology and our sexual drives, our sexual prowess, our ability to perform in the bedroom. Like I said, as a man, when we can't perform in the bedroom and, you know, like I said, our dick's limp because we've been jerking off the porn all day or whatever, and then we can't satisfy a real woman or a real partner, then there's a, there's a huge play on our self-confidence. There's a huge play on our charisma. We start to become more small. We don't want to be seen as much. But a yeah. man who's confident in his sexuality, he's confident in who he is. He knows he's got control over himself and his thoughts and his his life. Then he's he gives off a much different vibe, uh, uh, and 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 he shows up much differently both in and outside uh, no, of the bedroom. I mean that feeling when when you know you've you know you've you banked it out in the bedroom, and the next day as you're going to work, you're like, yeah, I'm the man. Oh, do you close in deals for sure. Like after a good <laughs> sexual session, you're definitely signing clients up. And I found for myself, like, especially engaging in like non ejaculatory sex and being able to perform like in a really like powerful way with my wife, like I noticed that it's, 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 uh, the, the way that I can, the, my risk tolerance is higher. My mm. ambition is higher. So I'm willing to go out and believe in myself more, which has allowed me bigger opportunities. And that continues to expand. And this is one of the messages I'm you know trying to drive home with, you know, the sexual education that I'm bringing out is saying, if you get this under control and really begin to use it outside the bedroom as well, like you're going to have a tremendous amount of, of confidence and strength, which I think is very much lacking. I think that uh, the world has overly become, there's a feminization of men that's happening. Mm. I believe that that's happening very, um, you know, whether it's, it's purposefully or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is it's happening and that there needs to be a healthy masculinity. Uh, just to, you know, before we wrap up here, I want to get your thoughts specifically on, you know, using sexual energy outside of the bedroom, alchemizing energy. I know that's, uh, you know, how has that affected you or helped you being able to, you know, consciously use this energy into your, into your different aspects of your life? I think the most important thing is that it really puts you in touch with your body. And by that, I mean, like your, your energy state. Um, you know, you know, when you are at different energy states, you know, when you're in a frustrated state, you know, when you're in a, in a calm state in a intense state, and these are things I never really thought about, uh, before starting some of these practices and the more, um, it's become a part of my everyday, 
I've, I've come to understand that not only can I control my state and my energy, but it influences how other people around me interact. And there's this odd ability to influence other people based on how I'm showing up. And I think if there's one thing that the um, practices have given me, it's this ability to really be much more in touch with kind of where I am and then, you know, communicate, influence uh, those around me. Um, yeah. it's, and it's, it's fun, actually. It's really fun to like, <laughs> kind of, you know, be able to, to do that. And it's almost like a, like a little superpower. I was going to say it's, it's, it's a power, right? It, there's, there's power yeah. with this practice that a lot of men, um, some men, obviously, if you're on this channel and you've been subscribed and you're, you know, keeping up with all the videos, you obviously know this, but for men who are just being introduced to this idea or this concept of transmuting our sexual energy or harnessing our sexual energy and, and not necessarily just dispersing it at every, every whim, um, you know, it's strange, right? It's like a strange thing. It's like almost a strange concept. Um, but you can see uh, over history has shown us, you know, so many, so many successful men have used, uh, you know, their sexual energy, brought some kind of discipline or focus with it and, uh, and it and how powerful and successful they've become. So it's definitely a power and it can be a lot of fun. I to tell guys, I'm like, master this stuff. And uh, you won't need the pornography anymore because you'll, uh, you know, you'll be able to fuck like a king and you'll and, and, yeah. and your your woman will want you more. She'll desire you more because a lot of guys are like, oh, my woman doesn't desire me. I'm like, are you the type of man that yeah, is desirable? Yeah. Uh, if that's true, then, then I hate to say it. But that's your fault. That's right. Yes, yeah. it's true. It's like you have to be the type of man that's desirable because when you're the type of man who's desirable. You've got your finances together, your physical, you know, you've got your fight together and you can fuck then, then you're, a, you know, you're a high value or you're a 1% man. You're actually just part of a, a very small population of men who've decided to actualize themselves as opposed to just live a life of comfort and, and constant self-pleasure, not just in masturbation, yeah. but in food and chips and video games and all the other ways that we're, we're, we're pleasuring ourselves essentially and not living a life where they're challenging themselves, pushing forward, having long-term thinking and controlling themselves. There's a massive uh, difference of, of quality of life there. And I think that's the big, you know, at least a big point that I want to hammer home. I'm like, there's always an exchange. You take the easy way out. You take the instant gratification, then there's a certain life available. And that life is 99% of people are living that life. You just look around and, and that life is everywhere. Or there's a small percentage of people who take the life of, 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 of willing austerity, meaning they challenge themselves to go above and beyond the status quo in their finances, in their fight, and in their fucking, said, well, there's a whole different life available there. And, uh, and it's now, it's now each man has to make their choice. So yeah, I appreciate you just sharing some real truth, some real, like, kind of like, look, this is what it is because I think there's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of like good marketing and, and, and it's easy to get caught in these, like, just do this, you know, a lot of guys, they don't realize when they sign up in, in the first example, the senior retention army, it's a year commitment. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's a year commitment. I'm like, yeah, because I'm personally not interested in working with people who aren't serious about transforming their lives or leveling up. Because I know the reality is, you, yeah, I can do a weekend thing and I can do a webinar. And those are great to introduce you to things and to, and to give you certain concepts. They're very transformational at the beginning. But for it to really last, for you to really get the results and bring out your masculinity, it's a lifestyle shift. It's not just something you do for a weekend. And the benefits are, they're great because the benefits are you become the man in your life. You become that guy, right? You know, you become that guy that people turn to. You become that guy that people follow. You become that guy who makes the decisions. And it's great to be that guy yeah. because that guy is in charge of his own destiny. And ultimately that guy is, and that's what drives your happiness. Love it, man. Look, Dr. T, 
I love, uh, I always love uh, our conversations. They're always insightful. I appreciate you coming here and spending some time on the channel and sharing your wisdom. I'm going to leave your links and such below so people can learn more about you, your business and and connect. And, uh, and of course, guys, you know, my links are below. You can always go to my website and all that kind of good stuff to get started on your journey. If you want to learn more about me, my website's right there. The links are in the description. You got any final words before we, uh, we wrap it up? No, I, it's always a great conversation. I think you're really helping guys be better versions of themselves. And it, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And we'll see everybody on the next episode or the next video.